Hello everyone, Dr. Victoria Scribo here, speaking to you from the Caesar Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. We're gonna look at the astrology of the week ahead. That is the week from um, June 26th, which is today until June 30th. And there are a number of things happening. And um, we are at a, I think an inflection point um, in, um, and a, and a sea change in what we are going to see um, from this point on. So let's let's take a look at the astrology and see maybe perhaps why I say that uh, and what we can expect um, this week um, and in the future. Okay, let's let's get started here. So we start here uh, at week five, June twenty sixth to um, June 30th, and um, we start with, um, well, today, there's no major aspects happening today. Um, if you want to know more specifics about today, Sunday the 26th, you can check out my morning walk through the garden. I talk about uh, the few things that are happening today. But on Monday, we see some more major aspects. On Monday, we have a Mars, Mars, uh, the planet of action, uh, making a sextile to Saturn. This is a, a waxing sextile. It's, it's sort of an opening sextile. And the first sort of major Ptolemaic aspect uh, since the new, since the conjunction that started this two-year synodic cycle. Um, so this opening the lines of communication about what actions we need to take in order to structure our society, Saturn in Aquarius. This started back on April 4th, that's 4-4, um, 2022. That vibrates to a 14-5. Uh, excused for the, this is a mistake here. So it's just, should just be 14.5. 14.5 is the temperance card, right? And the tarot, it's the card of healing. It's the card of walking the straight and narrow. It's the card associated with not getting caught up in extremes. And yes, we're, we're in very extreme and we're in very extreme energies now, right? We had something um, this past Friday, was it? Yeah, this past Friday, when Roe was overturned, when the Miranda rights can't sue if they don't read you your Miranda rights anymore, and also the gun control issue uh, in New York, all of this came down with um, a very partisan and originalist constitutional group of, um, of jurors who, uh, when asked about these things in their confirmation hearings, all lied through their teeth. Um, so if you can't trust the judge to tell the truth, how can you trust the judge to discern the truth? Okay. Um, so that April 4th conjunction was at 23 degrees of Aquarius says a big bear sitting down and waving its, all its paws. Uh, the self-discipline which results from an intelligent development of individuals, faculties under proper training. As we move forward in an attempt to structure our society uh, and what I would like to think is a more, in a more Aquarian way where we're um, leveling the playing field, raising all boats, um, top down, um, moving to more uh, power struggles that are vertical, moving to more power struggles that are horizontal, right? Um, we look to those Aquarian values. How do we move forward? Uh, well, first of all, we have to have the conversation and there's a lot of conversations going on. I know uh, when we, my friends and I were up in Cambridge on the day that that all came down, you could hear these little conversations happening and little quietly because this is a very uh, sensitive subject and a very personal subject. Um, 
And so people weren't where I was, weren't necessarily screaming things out, but certainly having the conversations. And we are having conversations. We want our voices heard. Isn't that what democracy is all about? Um, and of course, democracy is is at risk um, because of you know various um, various players who would rather see us under their thumb than um, being our own best advocates, right? Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we need to be disciplined. We need to know the rules of their game so that we can work within the rules until we can actually change the rules, right? So that's what I would say about that. On Monday, the 27th, we have Mercury and Gemini making a waxing, waxing sextile to Chiron and Aries. This is a waxing sextile. This is an opening sextile. So what is this? More conversation, more communication. Well, what would we be co communicating about? We would be communicating about uh, the wounded, the wounded, the Chiron energy in Aries, right? And Mercury is powerfully placed in Gemini. And it is direct, it is out of its retrograde shadow. So Gemini is sort of free to, to express itself at this time. And so the sextile to Aries, um, we are opening the lines of communication around uh, issues of wounding. What could possibly be some of these wounds we talk about with Chiron and Aries? Uh, our rights to our own bodies, perhaps? our rights to define ourselves, whatever pronoun you choose to use, um, our right to love who, who we are, right? Um, your right to life, to be yourself, to walk your path. Um, if we look at this chart here, this is an Aries rising chart. Here's Chiron here in Aries. And here is um, Mercury in, in Gemini, conjunct the moon. So this is a very personal, people will be speaking of perhaps their personal journeys, okay? Their personal journeys, their personal feelings, um, their experiences, their, their right to their experiences. Um, we also have Saturn here, right? Here's Saturn sextiling Mars. We just spoke of that. And now Mars sextiling, um, no, not Mars, uh, Chiron sextiling Mercury. Chiron and Mars are coming together for their uh, or have just come together, actually, Mars is moving away from Chiron now, but they just had a conjunction, taking actions on the wounds so people can be acting from their wounds or people can be acting to heal their wounds. But either way, conversations will be had. So Tuesday, January 28th, there's a lot of things happening on that day, not the least of which is the new moon in Cancer. But before we get that, before we get there, there's a couple of things that happen before that new moon. That new moon actually occurs um, at like almost 11 o'clock at night. So for some places, um, for some places it's actually happening the next day. Anyway, I always mess that up. I apologize. I can't do the time thing in my head. I have to actually look at it on a piece of paper. So, uh, we have Neptune stationing retrograde at 26 degrees of Pisces. Now, Neptune has been in Pisces since 2011. It is in its last decade of Pisces. The last decade of Pisces is ruled by the moon. And so we have this moon energy. And of course, moon is feminine, right? Moon is mother. Moon is children. Moon is nurturing. Moon is birth. So 26 degrees of, of Pisces, we have watching a very thin moon crescent peering at sunset. 
And when we have a moon appearing at sunset, that is the crescent moon. That is, that is the, the first sort of actions to a new moon. So this is a time of action. It's a time of moving out, right? It's a time of taking an action from this position. Um, appearing at sunset, different people realize that time has come to go ahead with their different projects. So there's this energy of having to figure out where it is that I think you can put your, you can have your most power, your most agency, your most success, okay? Uh, now it is retrograde, so retrogression in its nature is introspective. It is going to retrograde back to 23 degrees of Pisces and then on December 3rd, which incidentally is a 12-3, a 21-3 vibration, which is the world card, right? Something ends and something begins. Um, we're gonna have a time to sort of go over this energy, right? This Pisces energy. What do we believe? What is, what is our connection to source? How do we connect to the spiritual realms, right? Pisces is associated uh, with, you know, Neptune and Pisces is very powerful. Look to Neptune. Neptune is connected to the uh, hanged man card. This month, this month, the monthly plus yearly vibration of June is the hanged man, the 12 3, the serenity prayer. This is the mantra that we're going to have to work with through this period of time. Then you look to Pisces, right? What's Pisces? Pisces in the, in the tarot is the moon card. What does Pisces connect? Pis and what does the moon card connect in the tree of life? It connects Netzach, the, the Sephiroth of Venus, the feminine, and mother nature, the forces of nature, the feelings, our feelings connects us to planet earth. Will this be a, a summer full of people expressing their feelings? You bet. You bet. The keynote here is the keen appreciation of the value of individualized responses to any challenge in life. So we don't have to necessarily agree. We need to work where we are going to be most, um, most successful, perhaps, or most powerful in whatever way that we can as we move forward through this, what promises to be a very active summer and a very active fall because we have to remember we do have the midterms coming up and the midterms fall on an eclipse. Neptune retrogrades back to 23, to Pis 23 of Pisces stationing direct on December 3rd. On Tuesday, January 28th, we also have the sun making a first quarter square to Jupiter, the sun at eight degrees of Cancer, Jupiter at eight degrees of Aries. First quarter square, crisis in action. This crisis in action on seeds planted at the sun-Jupiter conjunction. When did that happen? That actually happened on March 5th, 2022, which vibrates to a 17-8 vibration, the star card. Be inspired, folks. Uh, at 15 degrees of Pisces. What is the Sabian symbol for 15 degrees of Pisces? An officer instructing his men before a stim simulated attack under a barrage of live shells. The need for thorough rehearsing before any complex and inherently dangerous social ritual in which power is used or evoked. We need to be very mindful about the way we move forward we need to be very mindful where our power lies and how we can utilize that power to make the changes and be the changes that we want to see in our world. The Sabian symbol for Jupiter at eight degrees of Aries. So these are the two Sabian symbols that are square each other. A large woman's hat with streamers blown by the east wind. Protection and spiritual guidance of the development of consciousness. This means that we need to depend upon our connection to spirit, our connection to God, goddess, all that is, our connection to mother earth, our connection to father sky. Squaring eight of cancer, a group of rabbits dressed in human clothes walk as if on parade. 
the tendency for all forms of life to imitate higher forms as a stimulus to growth. If we want people to change, we need to be our best selves. If you understand more than the next person who maybe has a different opinion of you, you, you need to do your best to, and you're not gonna necessarily change people's minds, but state your case perhaps. Why without actually getting angry at people? And which is very difficult because Jupiter is in Aries. People have the right to their ideas. They have the right to their beliefs. They have the right to their opinions. However, the law does not. The law does not have a right to an opinion. The law is the law and it has to be equal. So you're not gonna necessarily be able to fight the overturning of Roe versus Wade by yelling at people who disagree with you. You have to go to where it's going to count and where it's gonna count at this point is the vote, is the vote. On June 28th, same day, we have the new moon in Cancer. Incidentally, June 28th vibrates to a 40 over four on the tree of life. That is the page of cups located in Malkuth associated with the sign of Pisces. The last decan of Pisces where we find Neptune ruled by the moon. Cancer is a, 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 a a moon ruled sign. So the new moon in Cancer is especially powerful because Cancer is ruled by the moon. So this new moon is gonna be very, very important. Now we have this new moon that we're looking at here uh, with the Aries ascendant. So this is true for everybody on planet earth, okay? Eight degrees of Cancer, a group of rabbits dressed in human clothes walks as if on parade. The tendency in all forms of life to imitate higher forms as a stimulus for growth. Dane Roger further states, this rather strange symbol points to what is essential in all first attempts at developing consciousness and furthering and furthering one's growth through association with those who have already reached a superior evolutionary or mental level. You wanna work with people who are as evolved or perhaps more evolved or more knowledgeable about these things, okay? The key word here is learning process. So we are in a learning process. We can see here, um, excuse me, this is the wrong chart here. I don't know why this chart is in here. Okay, we're just gonna go on because I do have the right charts here. So what does the new moon in Cancer mean for America? Well, first of all, and, and, I, and I ask this question because I live in America. Most people who watch me live in America, but even if you don't live in America, what happens in America really does affect the rest of the world. And of course, America is going through its Pluto return. It's first ever Pluto return. America is a young country. Pluto returns come around about every 250 years. And in, in point of fact, the second sort of swipe of Pluto to Pluto that's happening in 2022 is happening in the intervening weeks between this new moon and the full moon on the 13th. I believe it's the 5th of, of July, but I could be wrong about that. Actually, hold on, I will tell you because I have it right here when that happens. Um, I was wrong, the 11th, the 11th of July, it's July 11th. We have the second hit of our Pluto return for the US. And then we have the, the full moon in, in Capricorn on the 13th. So this new moon is very, very important for seeding um, intention. Now, here we have the new moon at seven degrees of um, eight degrees, actually. We have the moon at eight degrees of um, Cancer. The moon is square. Um, Jupiter at eight degrees 
of Aries. There is a sesquiquadrate to the south node, Scorpio, and a sesquiquadrate to the south node, Scorpio. This is called a hammer of Thor or Thor's hammer. It is an aspect pattern that is very, very stressful. Squares are argumentative, but this is a crisis in action square. So the question is, what actions do we need to take? What actions do we need to take? In consideration, in conjunct, I mean, uh, semi-square, sesquiquadrate, sorry, to the south node in Scorpio, with an eye to the past, what has worked in the past? What hasn't worked in the past? How do we move forward? Scorpio is about our desires. It is also about control. Right, control, the, the ninth house here, religion, religious control perhaps in the, and we have opposite that the North node, of course, because the North node is always uh, opposite the South node, but the North node is conjunct Uranus. Uranus is about an awakening. This is very, very, very stressful. We also have uh, in, as help, to this, we have Neptune trining the south node, sextiling the north node. Um, Neptune in trines and sextiles is helpful in that it opens up uh, higher levels of consciousness to us. If it was square, it would confuse us. But with trines and sextiles, we have an opportunity to access higher realms of consciousness. We have to also remember that through this period, and this has been going on for a long time, months now, we have Saturn square the nodes. Saturn square the nodes requires us to mature. How do we mature? We mature by looking to the past, to see the shadow, to see what has happened in the past that has created suffering, death. You know, Scorpio is death and, and rebirth, but First, you gotta die before you're reborn. And so the process, that process is looked at as we, and then move into the North Node in Taurus. And what about the North Node in Taurus? What rules the North Node in Taurus? Venus. Venus rules the North Node in Taurus. Where is Venus? Venus is at 18 degrees of, uh, I'm sorry, seven, eight degrees, sorry, eight degrees of, um, Gemini, that's eight degrees of Gemini for Venus, eight degrees for the sun and moon, eight degrees for Jupiter. And I think there's one more eight degree here. Uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I think those are the, so there's a lot of, of this sort of eighth degree that's being activated. And if I remember correctly, um, this degree of the, the this might be, uh, an important point in the in the um, in the mutable signs. I believe eight degrees might be considered a world point. Anyway, uh, we also have um, we have Pluto trining the North Node. It's it's widening now. It was it was a little tighter before, and we also have Eris. But we'll look at her after we look because I, I have that question: What Eris and the and the other feminine archetypes, which are asteroids, what are they showing us uh, at this time of this new moon? Now, if we look over here, this is the Sibley chart, and then this is the new moon as it sits over it. So this is how the new moon is affecting this chart. First of all, the new moon is at eight degrees, and that is actually on our Venus and our Jupiter, which is in Cancer. Venus, Jupiter in Cancer, Venus is the feminine. Jupiter is expansion, um, understanding. It is also conjunct the north, I mean, the sun of the United States. So this new moon sits on this three planet clump in Cancer, in Cancer, asking us to move in a new direction right? New, a new moon, new direction, new way of reacting and responding to life. Here's Mercury here. Remember Mercury is um, uh, Mercury out of retrograde. What else is Mercury doing? I think Mercury's doing one other thing here. Hold on. 
I can't find my little cursor. Okay. Um, Mercury is actually square the Neptune of the of the U.S. Neptune and Neptune in that fifth house. I mean, uh, ninth house, that can be religion, right? That can be religion, the fight between a personal rights here and, and the religious stuff. But here we, here's something very interesting. We have Venus, the ruler of the North Node, right? North Node in Taurus, conjunct Uranus in the sixth house, the sixth house of health, women's health, the right to a safe and legal abortion is a medical decision that needs to be made between a woman and her doctor and anybody else in her family that's involved in the decision because the family and the woman has to take care of the child and the doctor has to make sure that the woman's needs, health needs are taken care of. That includes physical health needs and mental health needs. And when you have these trigger laws that are uh, coming into whatever, um, now, whoop, now it's everything's illegal, even if you are raped or incested, how is that helping a child? How is that helping a woman? How is that helping her mental health? How is that helping her physical health? Many of these places, where people, where women can't get to out of state in order to have legal abortions in states that have legal abortions. Um, how do they get care? How, how they're, they're the, the rates for women in those states, in those red states is 17% higher than white women to die in childbirth. Is this what we want? Is this what we want? We want women dying. We want children, motherless children, not to mention the energetic imprint that having a child out of rape or a child out of incest can do. Now, not to say there are children that are born from rape and incest that aren't wonderful, beautiful children. You know, we make, we do the best we can, I think, in those situations. And yet it's a consideration that every mother has to make. Most of the abortions that occur, occur for married women. What's gonna happen when all these babies of rape or incest, who's gonna raise them? Are they gonna garnish the raise, the, the, um, are they gonna garnish the salary of the rapist or the, incest, or the incestor, incestor, I guess that's the word. Um, how about you have a girlfriend and you, you know, you just, you wanted to use your condom, but you forgot it or it got a hole in it and now your girlfriend's pregnant and you, you know, want to go in the world and, and live your life. And, or maybe it's just, you know, a friend or somebody you met that you were interested in and you have sex and now there's a baby. You don't think they're going to look for you men to see, to, to, to subsidize this child's life. And then what happens if, if the mother dies in childbirth? What's the responsibility of the father? What's the responsibility of the state? Most, most uh, children in, in care, um, in social service care, um, are not in a good situation. They're not. Many of them come out, they're homeless. After 18, they don't have any place to live state no longer supports them. And we wonder where our homeless population comes and our mentally ill population comes from. And that's just part of the story. It's certainly not the whole story, but it is a consideration in the story. The greatest, richest country in the world, country, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, unless you're a woman, unless you're black, unless you're poor, unless you're indigenous, Um, we have Saturn here, Saturn sitting on the, the moon of the, of the United States. And of course, the Pluto return, getting closer and closer. Chiron is getting closer and closer to Chiron. In the United States chart, we will be having our fifth 
Chiron return next year. Um, I just want to see if there's anything else going on in this particular Chiron in Aries opposite uh, Saturn in Libra. Attack on, uh, this is one of the reasons why everybody's attacking Biden, you know, because they will never take responsibility for their part in any of the problems. They'll just blame it on, on Joe, Grandpa Joe, Saturn there in that uh, in that 10th house, the president, house of the president. This was taken outside of the Supreme Court. Here's this building with all these steps, the Supreme Court surrounded by gates. They need to come down to the people, take the gates down and listen to the people. They are not above us. Now, what does Eris have to say about all of this? <laughs> I thought this was a very, a very interesting question. First of all, Eris was discovered in, I think, 2003, 2003, 2006. I always, I always confuse it, actually. She is the sister of Aries. She's known as the goddess of discord. She rolled the golden apple into the wedding um, at Troy, which started the, uh, the wedding um, the wedding that started the Trojan War when Aphrodite promised Paris at the judgment of Paris that she, he would get Helen of Troy, even though Helen was married to somebody else, uh, that she would get, she would give him Helen of Troy if, if she picked, if he picked her as the fairest goddess. Eris used, who wasn't invited to the wedding and was pissed off, used the other goddesses' uh, egos sense of entitlement against them. She's the fly in every ointment. She would go around to the uh, wounded soldiers on the battlefield of her brother Ares and poke their wounds, take a spear and poke it even more, an open wound. Is this painful enough? No, here you go, here's a little bit more. She, it makes us question whether it's all worth it, right? So what's she doing? Well, <laughs> Eris is, uh, where is she? Right here. In fact, um, it might have even been Friday, but shortly before the new moon, it might actually be Monday that this happens, but shortly before the new moon, the sun, uh, Mars makes a conjunction to Eris that starts a two-year cycle. Eris at 25 degrees of Aries. Um, is making a square to Pluto. She is um, making a sextile to Saturn. This is a sextile, this energy, the Saturn Eris sextile is a progressive sextile, sharing what you know, moving into a more humanitarian energy. Okay. What are the other asteroids doing? Well, the other feminine asteroids, let's take a look. Here is Ceres at 19 degrees of Cancer. Um, Ceres is trine Neptune and Ceres is trine the South Node. Ceres is a reaping energy. Ceres is also associated with grief in Cancer the grief of the feminine, the grief of the mothers, the grief of the children. Of course, she's been in cancer. She was in cancer during Uvalde. She's been in cancer for a while now, and we are reaping and feeling. Here's uh, Eris here at six degrees of, of uh, Pisces, seven degrees of Pisces. That is trine the North Node. Um, Vesta is keeping the sacred flames alight, keeping the sacred flames alight. Here is Juno, the goddess of relationship, the goddess of um, marriage, of partnership in general. 
in Pisces close to that Neptune and trine series, trine the south node. This can be to a certain extent, the old um, relationship dynamics where women didn't have a right to say what they wanted to do with their bodies or have a right to um, be self-determining. So we, could, we can see that because it's connected to the South Node, but if it's connected to the South Node, it's also connected to the North Node. And we have Uranus on that North Node, sextiling these. So this is time for change, revolutionary change at a very sort of basic earthly living energy of Taurus, the body, the physical body. Taurus is a Venus ruled sign. What is Venus doing? Here's Venus, right? She's making a semi sextile to the sun. She's making a semi sextile to, um, to uh, Jupiter. She's sort of sandwiched because she's right at the, the uh, um, midpoint of the sun and Jupiter. Remember the sun and Jupiter are in that square to each other with Thor, Amor. Meaning that Venus and Gemini can to a certain extent mitigate some of that. And what is Venus and Gemini? Venus and Gemini is let's talk it over. Let's talk about it. Um, I don't, let me see if I have my, my what do you call book here? Let's see if I can look at the Sabian symbol. God. I don't think I have it here. All right, I'll, I will, I'm gonna read the saving symbol. Well, I don't think I can actually. All right, well, I'm sorry. You'll have to look that up. You'll have to look at the saving symbol for eight degrees of Gemini because that is in, to a certain extent a key to this. Um, and here we have Pallas Athena. Pallas Athena, the goddess of government, good governance, right? the goddess of wisdom, the goddess of strategy. She's symbolized by the owl, the, the, the bird that sees 360 degrees. She's a symbol of wisdom. Where is she? She is in a trine to Pluto transformation, right? Um, Pallas Athena and Pluto, this is a uncle and a niece, right? <laughs> Just, you know, in that respect. Um, she is conjunct Algol. Now we have had Mercury on Algol, Venus on Algol. Algol is um, the lose your head. Excuse me. That guy passes every day with that stupid thing. I wish he'd fix it. Sorry, my, my Mars is showing. Um, off with their heads, Algol, trining Pluto. So this is an opportunity. Um, it, it really is in its way, um, a very powerful time. We also have Mars here, square Pluto. It is not a first quarter square yet, but it is, it is moving towards that first quarter square, which is gonna happen in July, crisis in action. Um, so this is a very fraught time, a very powerful time. Now, as far as the rest of the month, um, there are no other major aspects happening after that new moon. Of course, there's enough happening on that day to last us a few months if we just wanted to do that. But there's gonna be many more things happening, including uh, our second Pluto return in July. Um, this uh, the sun, um, Uranus conjuncting the North Node at the beginning of August. We still have some more um, uh, things coming through the uh, January 6th committee. There was just a, a, a that we're going to be seeing uh, part of a, um, a thing that uh, somebody did on the Trumps <coughs> and what they're saying, what they were doing, what they were going through at the time um, after they, he lost the election. So we, there's still a lot of information to come out. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, so it's going to be a hot and it's going to be a hot summer, guys. It's going to be hot because people are going to be riled up. It's going to be hot because it's going to be hot. We're still in the middle of this. We're still moving through climate change 
and that, of course, we have no idea what, how that's going to suss out in the end. It's, oh, I mean, scientists have an idea, but how what's that going to mean for us at this point? Um, there's a lot happening, and as as far as I'm able, I will be here through it with you, looking at the stars, trying to figure things out. If you haven't caught our moon shadows, me and Ona did a moon shadows last night. It's kind of long, a minute and 26, um, an hour and 26 minutes. I think the last one we did was an hour and 26 minutes as well. It must be like a magical number for us. It's kind of, uh, if you have a little time, you can listen to it and then come back to it if you want. Uh, we talk about how these energies are, are expressing themselves in our lives, what we're seeing happening in both our personal lives, the people that we interact with, and what's happening in the world. So it's, uh, it's got quite a bit of astrology in it, but it's mostly how we experience the energies. And that's really what astrology is. It's observation, experience, correlation. And hopefully uh, what I've shared with you at this time uh, is helpful for you. It's not over, it's just beginning people. It's just beginning. We are, the tide is changing and we are the tide. We decide what direction, put your intention to direction, focus on what you have control over, where you have your most power, be your best self, help people along the way, put a hand out, even the people you don't agree with. And if, if you find it a fruitless exercise, pick somebody else, find somebody else or have somebody find you. Shine your light, shine your light, shine your light. That's what we're here to do. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope um, I've helped you get through this very somewhat treacherous month, uh, July. Stick with me for July and August and September and October and definitely November. Um, and as always, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Uh, much love to you all. Namaste. Take care, everyone.